What if you're told that the most powerful company protecting your digital life isn't Apple, Google or Microsoft? It's a name you've probably never heard or searched on Google. Never seen it trending on Twitter and yet it quietly guards your online bank account, your emails, your data right now. It's called the Palo Alto Networks. In 2013, this stock was trading above $40, a quiet firewall company in a noisy tech world. Fast forward to 2025, it's trading over at $200. But wait, before you do the math, there is an important footnote. In 2022, Palo Alto did a three for one stock split, meaning that today's $200 is actually equivalent to over $600 in pre-split terms. And that $40 back then becomes just around $10 when adjusted. So yes, this stock has surged 13x in little over a decade. That's Apple level growth, but from a cybersecurity firm. But this isn't just about the stock price. This is a story of how a company went from selling firewalls in back rooms to becoming the Apple of cybersecurity, turning protection into a platform and boring tech into a business empire. They didn't ride the hype train. They didn't go viral on social media. They simply outbuilt, outsmarted, and outlasted everyone in the world's most brutal tech arenas. So how did Palo Alto do it? How did they go from defending ports to dominating the future of digital safety? We'll take you on a journey through. So I've divided this in four stages. So let's dive in in stage one. From one trick firewall to zero trust pioneer. That's the phase of between 2013 to 2018. Back in 2013, Palo Alto Networks was known for one thing. Next gen firewalls that can actually understand what is happening in your traffic. Not just block IPs, but scan applications, track users, and adapt in real time. And sure, they were better than the old school players like Cisco or Checkpoint, but a firewall is just a gate. It doesn't secure your identity. It doesn't detect insider threats. It doesn't adapt to a world where data lives everywhere. At the time, it was a solid business. Recurring revenue, not much. Software margins, hardly anything. Wall Street love, minimal. The revenue in 2013 was around $400 million. The stock price pre-split just hovering around $40. They had the tech, but not the traction. Then the internet evolved, cloud computing exploded, remote work took off, and traditional firewalls suddenly looked outdated. Now here's the turning point, that instead of being a product company, Palo Alto started thinking like a platform company. CEO Mark Leff Allen and later Nikesh Arora ex-Google made a bold bet. Cybersecurity would shift from network focus to identity, cloud, and AI-powered platforms. That meant expanding beyond network protection into endpoint security like antivirus but smarter. Threat intelligence detecting new kinds of malware. Automation because humans alone can't keep up. Now this was not going to be some overnight rebranding. And step one is go into an acquisition spree. Between 2018 and 2022, Palo Alto bought over 15 startups spending billions. Demisto for security orchestration. Eporetto for micro segmentation. Bridge Crew for DevOps security. CloudGenX for cloud networking. Each one helped modernize Palo Alto's platform, stitching together a suite of cloud-native tools under one umbrella. They launched Prisma Cloud and Cortex end-to-end -end platforms designed to protect data across any environment from AWS to your laptop. Coming to stage two, the Nikesh Arora era from sales to strategy overall. It's mid-2018, Palo Alto has just crossed $2 billion in annual revenue, but something peels off. The firewall product, once revolutionary, is now facing competition from dozens of copycats. The cloud transformation is underway but slow. Innovation is coming in pieces but not at a platform scale. They bring in Nikesh Arora as CEO, who's not a cybersecurity veteran and not even a hardcore engineer. Nikesh Arora was a sales juggernaut, former SoftBank president, and before that, Google's top business exec who helped scale ad revenues into Stratosphere. To many in Silicon Valley, the question was, why would a cloud security company hire a Google ad guy? But Palo Alto didn't just want a CEO. They wanted a force of acceleration and Nikesh delivered. He started by streamlining teams, merged overlapping product units, reintroduced centralized R&D planning, slashed redundant sales ops, and most importantly, reoriented the company around cloud, AI, and subscriptions. Well, what changed? It tripled down on M&A, buying Demisto, security orchestration, and these, some of the other names which I told you previously. Focused on building a cloud native security platform and not just stacking products. Pivoted the company towards zero trust architecture where nothing inside or outside your system is trusted without verification. The vision was don't just build tools, but build an ecosystem using Cortex, Prisma and Strata that talk to each other, learn and adapt in real time. 
and this reflected in their key numbers for financial year 2024. Revenue touched $8 billion, R&D spend was at over $1.8 billion, net income was $2.58 billion and free cash flow was almost $3.10 billion. This phase wasn't about cutting costs, he shifted it from production to platform, from hardware to cloud, from reactive defense to automated offense. It was basically about reinvention through aggressive investment and integration. Now coming to stage 3, Cloud AI and the Q1 2025 power play. By 2023, Palo Alto Networks had already redefined itself as a cloud-first subscription-heavy platform. But the next leap came through artificial intelligence. Now let's rewind for a second. In the old world, security meant building taller firewalls, and praying attackers couldn't climb over. But hackers got smarter, threats became even more dynamic and enterprise environments exploded in complexity, thousands of apps, hybrid infrastructure and remote devices. The old approach was dead on arrival. Palo Alto solution, build an AI-powered security brain. Palo Alto isn't just using AI, it is compounding it. More customers, more data, smarter AI, better production, more customers. In Q1 2025, Palo Alto stopped being just a cybersecurity leader and became an investor darling. In May 2025, Palo Alto announced explosive Q1 numbers that turned head. Key matrix show us that revenue was $2.14 billion, which was up 14% year on year. Net income stood at $350 million. Free crash flow was standing at $578 million. And the remaining performance obligations stood at $13.5 billion. Now, billings, they were 20% up year on year, up to $2.5 billion. Now, coming to cloud security, now that accounts for almost 38% plus of the total billings led by Prisma in AI-driven detection, AI-powered automation. They're using machine learning to detect threats in real time, even with zero-day exploits. Platform consolidation. Most customers now use three-plus modules, meaning Palo Alto doesn't just land deals, it expands them. Stock market love. After Q1, the stock soared to over $200, making it one of the best-performing tech stocks of the year. This nearly a 13x return since 2013, and when the stock was trading at roughly $10 split adjusted price, even in a tech-heavy market, Palo Alto stood out because its margin resembled software companies. Its growth matched younger AI startups, and its recurring revenue gave investors a lot of comfort. Now, analysts sitting across the board raised their targets. Goldman Sachs did the price target of $231. Morgan Stanley chose this as the top pick for their cybersecurity niche. Jeffrey said that AI tailwind is just getting started and why it matters to you, what it means for the future of security, let's step back. At this point, you might be thinking, okay, cool story. Palo Alto reinvested in itself, made billions, big deal. But what does it have to do with me? Well, here's the thing. In 2025, cybersecurity isn't just about a tech thing, it's a life thing. Everything that you do from logging into your bank to ordering groceries to opening a job offer in Gmail, runs in systems that are constantly under attack. The average person doesn't see it, but here is what is happening behind the curtains. Every 11 seconds, a company is hit by ransomware. Hackers are now using AI to mimic your voice. Phishing emails, they're no longer Prince of Nigeria. They look like the real invoices from your real boss. It's not just about corporate breaches anymore. It's your data, your bank account, your job application, and whether it is protected or wide open. Now here is where Palo Alto becomes the most relevant. While others are still selling disconnected point solutions, endpoint here, firewall there, Palo Alto bundled everything together into one intelligent security layer. That is what big players like Amazon, Comcast, US government agencies, and even Fortune 10 banks have all quietly made Palo Alto their cybersecurity backbone. They're betting not just on protection, but prediction. And in this very process, Palo Alto has become something bigger. It is not just a cybersecurity company, but a mission critical infrastructure provider, the same way AWS powers the cloud and Nvidia powers the AI. Palo Alto is trying to power trust in the digital age. And as a business use case, if you're an investor, you're looking at a company with 77% plus gross margins, $578 million in quarterly free cash flow, and which has built a dominant position in an exploding market. And this company has been outperforming NASDAQ by a wide margin. One of the few tech stocks combining profitability, growth, and mission critical relevance. This isn't about hype. It's about a company solving one of the most biggest problems of a digital century and doing it profitably. The conclusion here is that the apple of cybersecurity and a stock which is worth watching. In a world where everything is drowning in data and under siege from cyber attacks, trust is going to be the next currency. 10 years ago, Palo Alto was just another firewall company trading at a $40 pre-split fighting for attention. But in 2025, it is sitting above $200 a share 
delivering billion dollar quarters out innovating legacy vendors and dominating headlines with real ai driven breakthroughs but real story isn't just about the stock price it's in the playbook because palo alto didn't win by cutting cost or copying competitors they basically won by reinventing their business model from going from hardware to software betting early and big on ai acquiring smart and integrating even smarter and turning a boring back end tech into something boardrooms now obsess over this was in luck this was a calculated decade long pivot executed with the precision of apple the ambition of google and returns of nvidia in a world where every company is becoming a tech company and every tech company is a target palo alto role is only growing so next time you hear someone say cyber security is boring just remember boring companies don't 13x in a decade boring companies don't protect the digital lives of billions boring companies don't become legends palo alto is building more than a firewall it's building the future of digital trust thank you so much for watching this video till the very end if you like this case study then we are bringing more such case studies to you in the near future please consider subscribing the channel and we'll see you in the other video investment in securities market are subject to market risks read all the related documents carefully before investing